largest telecommunications provider hit by copper thieves. The Democratic National Alliance on Grand Bahama. And a local doctor giving the warning signs of a prevalent ailment in Bahamian men. The Bahamas Tonight Northern Edition starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all, I'm Shashina Rolf-Arkison. As always, it is so great to have you with us. Topic news this evening, BTC services in the Sunrise community crippled after copper thieves hit a cell site in the area. The disruption causing a major inconvenience and now the search is on for those persons who are responsible. Copper thieves targeting BTC four times in the space of some two weeks. The bandits getting away with tens of thousands of dollars worth of copper, leaving a trail of destruction behind in the form of disadvantaged customers. Vice President of BTC Northern Bahamas, Trevor Turnquest. Four deliberate acts of sabotage over the past two weeks, and especially in the Sunrise Park subdivision. Um, persons are taking the, this, the big thick copper cables. Uh, 600 pair cables, so you know, it's a, it carries a hefty value. So a person are using it to uh, probably melt it down and, and sell it for, for copper. Um, every time this is taken down, we, you know, we have to utilize resources over probably two days just to put the cable back up and connect everything, everyone back in service. The latest incident taking place during the wee hours of Thursday morning. The BP says hundreds of customers have been inconvenienced as a result. The interruption in service to our customers is a problem to us. It's uh, um, bringing down approximately 600 plus customers. Um, uh, those customers who are now inconvenienced because they don't have telephone service, which is essential service. Uh, they don't have internet. And uh, persons with um, IPTV product, they are also out of service. He says resolving the issue for customers could take up to a day and a half. In times past, BTC has been the target of copper thieves. However, as of late, it appeared as though there was a decline on copper theft. Uh, as of late, it appears that um, it's starting to rise again. And that's one of the main reasons why we brought to bring attention to this so that you know the community knows that something is happening and they can keep their eyes open um you know when when, when acts of this nature occur it affects everybody you know um we have to expend money to bring it back up um there's a strain on our staff having to do the same thing over and over um when they could be supporting new uh, customers or repairing services that, you know, customers who are out of service. BTC officials say they are now working with police officials to bring this matter to a close. BTC is very concerned about this and uh, persons responsible, be assured that we will find who you are uh, through the use of our uh, local police and you will be brought to justice. Now BTC is offering a reward for the arrest and conviction of the suspects involved in these matters. Shashina rolf Arkison. Saturnus Network News. In other news, the Grand Bahama Taxi Union has a new leader, Harold Curry, beating out incumbent David Jones for the top position during elections yesterday. Incumbent Robney Forbes Jr. held on to the post of vice president, while Zedrick Black Saunders captured the second vice president post. Joyce Thomas is the new secretary general. Assistant Secretary Shirley Hall was unopposed. Edric Russell remains treasurer for the union, and the assistant treasurer is Mako Bryce. The union now has three new trustees, Carla Rose, Talon Delancey, and Wayne Roll. The seven committee members are Lakeisha Roll, Cardison Andrews, Tanisha Grant, Raul Francis, Davon Pettikin, Willis Outen, and Leanzo Fritz. Transportation Chairman is Clement Pender and Assistant Transportation Chairman Ernie Roll. Now there are 179 members who were eligible to vote in yesterday's election. Switching gears now, the De Democratic National Alliance on Grand Bahama over the weekend meeting with supporters and hosting an election of officers for various positions within the political party. Tonight, the deputy leader says that they are hitting the ground early in preparation for the 2022 general election. 
We wanted to be able to get our alliances up and running. Deputy Leader of the Democratic National Alliance, Arinthia Kamalafi, says that they have had an opportunity to speak with many Grand Bahamians about the current economic state of this island. She says many have expressed disappointment over both the Progressive Liberal Party and the Free National Movement government over the past few years. Kamalafi adds that there has been little to no improvement of this island since the FNM came into power just over a year ago. What we have is these pie-in-the-sky promises that are made by the various um, institutions of the PLP and the FNM and the Grand Bahamian people continue to be disappointed by that and of course we're hearing an even um, louder cry in that regard that the Grand Bahamians are very disappointed that it appears as though which we in the DNA always knew because we spoke about this on the campaign train on, on the campaign trail that the free national movement does not have a plan for Grand Bahama in fact they don't have a plan for the entire um, chain of islands throughout the archipelago of the Bahamas. The DNA entered the political arena in 2010 following the departure of Mr. Branwell McCartney from the FNM. The party contested all 38 seats in the 2012 general election, capturing around 8.5% of the national vote, which at the time many considered the reason for the FNM's defeat. But in 2017, the DNA's impact was significantly less. We had some um, challenges in the 2017 general election, a lot of that we lay at the feet of the governance of the previous administration. One of the things we got on the ground a lot was um, the fact that voters were afraid, in their words, these are the words that were communicated to us, they were afraid to vote for the Democratic National Alliance for fear of the Progressive Liberal Party coming back to office. And that, at the time, we knew that that was a serious narrative on the ground, that was on the ground, but we did not know how severe it would have been to our chances until after the general elections. So what we're trying to do now to counter things, because we believe we had the best plan, and in fact, uh, we were the only ones who were really talking from a plan. We sought to uh, raise the standard as it relates to general elections. We were not back and forward as the PLP were back and forward with one, with one another. We were actually speaking specifically to each area of our uh, plan and our manifesto. But she says their approach for 2022 will be quite different. What we are seeking to do from this early stage is to take our platform and to break it down into layman's terms so that the Bahamian people understand what you're going to get when you vote in a DNA government. You know, we're not just talking fluff. We actually have a plan and we're speaking to that plan. Of course, we're constantly reminding the Bahamian people that we've been on this um, um, wine press for too long. Now we've been treading back and forth between the PLP and the FNM and we're presenting ourselves as a viable option for our government in 2022. Kamalafi shares a part of their plan for Grand Bahama. We would be looking at improving the ease of doing business. We would also have to look at the ownership structure of um, the Hawksbill Creek Agreement and to see the challenges that are faced there. We know that it's costly, quite costly to operate in, in Freeport and, and obviously that's an issue, particularly when you are in a challenging economy. And so those are things that we were looking at and also not just focusing developing development around Freeport, but looking also at East End and West End. In other news, another Grand Bahama family investing in the local economy. This venture is viewed as expression of hope and an, al an alternative for the natives to dine. Romiko Knowles has more. Cocktails on the Bay is the name of the newly opened restaurant on Grand Bahama located at the Running Mon Marina. Minister of State for Grand Bahama, the Honorable Kwesi Thompson, commending the owners for taking on this venture and investing in the Grand Bahamian economy. Sometimes the answer is not outside. Sometimes the answer is looking on the inside with what we have and doing the best we can with what we have. Uh, and so this is really going to be a wonderful place. Uh, it's good to be at the Running Mon Marina. This is a beautiful location. We are encouraging all Grand Bahamians and all Bahamians to come and take a look at cocktails on the bay. 
Natives on hand for the opening of the restaurant could be seen enjoying the food and music from the live band. The Minister of State says that Grand Bahama was once known as the entertainment capital. He says an agreement was made to meet with all local club owners and entertainers to converse about reviving the entertainment industry. And he's pleased that the Caprons answered the call. How many of you have always wanted to have a place that you could go to, that you could just relax and listen to live, good, old-fashioned, Bahamian music? And so, we again want to congratulate them for providing Grand Bahama with a good place to be. Public relations person for Cocktails on the Bay, Yasmin Popescu, says that the restaurant is the third business venture on Grand Bahama for the owners, and it was designed to cater to a mature audience. A lot of the places that are open at the moment seem to cater more to the younger crowd, and so more mature people have very, very few places that they can go to enjoy themselves. So with that in mind, the owners decided to look for and found this spot, which is absolutely beautiful, at the Running Mon Sunrise Marina uh, Resort and Marina. Now the restaurant will be available to host birthday parties, wedding receptions, and more. Reporting for ZNS Network News, I'm Ramiko Knowles. In news from the crime beat, a joint operation dubbed Operation Blackout, resulting in the seizure of firearm, ammunition, cash, and the arrest of seven persons overnight. Reports are that between 4 p.m. and 11 p.m. yesterday, a joint operation of officers from the Drug Enforcement Unit and Rapid Response Team executed a search at a residence in Freeport. Police say the officers seized a 9mm pistol with 36 rounds of ammunition, 49 packages of suspected cocaine, over $1,500 in cash and two packages of suspected marijuana. Now five males and two females were taken into custody. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Stay with us. There's more news right after this.